All right, I'm going to show you how to build what's known as the electrostatic box. Or this is just a group of the different equations that we use in electrostatics. And we're going to start off with force. Well, electrostatic force has the units of newtons. Well, you should already know about something known as the electric field. And the electric field has units of newtons per coulomb which tells you how many newtons for every coulomb of charge. Just because this is important, let's talk about that. So what if, for instance, I had two newtons per coulomb? Well, if I multiplied by one coulomb, then that one coulomb feels two newtons of, of force. But if I had the same two newtons per coulomb times two coulombs, that would give me four newtons of force. So just like meters per second is how many meters for every second, this is how many newtons for every coulomb at that position. Let's get back to the box. All right. We should also know that newtons times meters gives us, uh, gives us potential energy, or energy or work, equals newtons times meters, or simply joules. Well, joules per coulomb is hopefully something that you've learned uh, in uh, circuits. We always do circuits before we do electrostatics for this very reason. Joules per coulomb or volts. So we're going to put a V over here. This is known as electric potential. Or simply potential. Now I'm going to say something here that some teachers don't like because it's very descriptive, but it's hard sometimes to remember. This is electric potential for energy. This is the potential for energy. This is not energy. This is energy. This is how much potential energy you would have, which is always how much work was done to get it there, or how much kinetic energy it will have later. But this is potential for energy. That's why it's joules per coulomb. Now, just like we did before, let's imagine we had eight joules per coulomb, which is 8 volts, and we have 1 coulomb of charge. Well, obviously we have 8 joules of potential energy for that 1 coulomb of charge. But what if you had 2 coulombs? Obviously, we have 16 joules of potential energy. So joules per coulomb tells you how many joules of energy each coulomb will have. Let's remove that. Now, you should see, this is, so we're slowly getting there to the box. Let me make sure that I've got everything where we can draw some, some, box, some lines and so forth. All right, so now we have some arrows. You should notice that when we go this direction, we have multiplied by meters. When we've gone this direction, we are dividing by meters. And notice that's on the top here. Well, it turns out that if a joule, and we're going to write this over here, is a newton per a newton meter, well, we also have a newton meter per coulomb. So notice once again, dividing by meters, I get over here. Multiplying by meters, and I'm just going to speed this up. This is again multiplying by meters, dividing by meters. The, bo the boxes, the brackets show that it's a unit. Now, if that's true, then electric field can also be, and I should write it under here, that's fine. This can also be volts per meter. Now, why is that useful? Turns out to be able to measure. Um, newtons per coulomb, in other words, to put a particular charge at a position, let's just say we have a positive charge here, and we put another positive charge here, I'm going to make it smaller because it's supposed to be a, a point charge, so this is one Q, and here's another Q, and to try to use a spring scale or something to figure out how much force there is, then dividing by coulombs, that's pretty tricky, but instead what I could do is I could take a multimeter, and I could neck this multimeter, a voltmeter, and I could say, well, there's this many volts there, and then I could easily just take a uh, ruler 
and I could measure the distance, etc. And I could say, oh, well, I have a particular volts divided by a certain meters. I know the electric field. So that's why that's actually very, very useful. Much more, Newton's per coulomb is useful mostly in doing calculations for Newtons, but harder to come across than volts per meter. Well, let's see what we did going up and down. Well, every time I went down, I divided by coulombs. Every time I go up, I multiply by coulombs. Well, that gives me my electrostatic box. Well, let me move this down just a little bit, and let's actually write our equations for each of these and we'll see if, if that holds. Well, electric force is, again it's a vector, K Q1 Q2 over R squared. Well, multiply by meters, which is R, so in this case I'm going to multiply by R and I get that potential energy no arrow because it's not a vector, equals k q1 q2 over just r, or force times distance is energy or work. Now why is there no uh, absolute values here? Because potential energy can be positive or negative. Okay, I'm just going to write can be positive or negative. This can only be positive because it's a vector, and vectors repre are represented by arrows, and you can't have a negative arrow. Well, down here, divide by coulombs, divide by Q. I get electric field equals K Q over R squared. Multiply by R, and I get my voltage, or my electric potential, which is K Q over R, and I'm going to again, can be positive or negative. Now let's look at one other thing. Notice that both of these have arrows, so that this entire side, I'm going to move it down just to, one more time, this entire side are vectors. These, this entire side are scalars. Now what does that mean? For those of you that are a little unfamiliar with vectors, you should go back and check that out in your first semester of physics. That means you have to use Pythagorean theorem to add them together if they're in, perpendicular. If they're parallel, you add them together, in other words, the same direction. If they're anti-parallel, meaning they're going opposite directions, you subtract, etc. You'll use sine, cosine, etc. For scalars, you strictly add them up, just like you did when you were in, uh, for instance, using mass. You just add the masses together. Um, also, think about scalars as um, income and debt. Debt being negative, income being positive. You can just add and subtract. It does. There is no such thing as left-handed money or right-handed money. Um, so anyway, we also did scalars in uh, when we did voltage. Just don't have this little area over here. You have a battery this way and another battery, you can just add them together. If Say that's 9 volts. 9 volts, that gives me 18 volts. But we also know that if one of them was backwards, let me draw that, we can have positive and negative voltage. So if I had 9 volts going up, it's really not flowing, but just the idea that there's a positive and negative, and 9 volts, well that's, we can call that one negative and this one positive, and our total voltage would be 0 volts. So that's how a scalar works. So here you have the electrostatic box based mostly on units. We went from newtons, newtons per coulomb, newtons times meters, which is joules, and just to make sure that we see this, I want to write this up here. This would be, uh, because work, let me get in the right spot, there we go, work equals force times distance, and the, f and the force produces potential energy. So that's where that comes from. That's joules. And then joules divided by coulombs gives me voltage, and voltage divided by meters gives me electric field.